the Blue Line Socks. Written and illustrated by Rod Cockle. Daylight touched the neighborhood rooftops as the professor ran into an empty street. The wild-haired scientist started toward an open garage and found the perfect place to hide his invention. Above the humming clothes washer and dryer, there was a shelf crowded with laundry supplies. The old man placed a glass jar full of clear liquid on the edge of the shelf, and then he turned and dashed away. Suddenly, the washing machine started to spin off balance. The glass jar shook, and the liquid inside began to glow with blue light. The jar tumbled off the shelf and shattered on the cement floor near a basket of laundry. For an instant, the liquid glistened with brilliant blue light as it splashed onto a pair of socks with blue stitching on the toes. Time to get ready for school, eight-year-old Stuart heard his mother say as she laid a pile of clothes on his desk. The socks are still a little damp, she said, but they'll be okay. Stuart sat up in his bed. The blue line socks? Yes, mother said teasingly. Your favorite. Stuart's dad watched the morning news while he made breakfast. There appeared a photo of the professor. The reporter said, "In local news, viewers are asked to keep a helpful lookout for this man, a once highly regarded scientist who has again wandered away from the city behavioral health center." Stuart sat at the table. Dad, it's pet day at school. Are we ever going to get a dog? Do you promise to scoop the dew? Father joked. Yes, Stuart agreed. Then we'll start to look for the right dog, said his dad. All right, the young boy cheered and didn't notice the socks flashed with blue light while he scratched his ankle. Every day, Stuart walked the same way to school. He crossed the street at the corner and walked on the opposite side of the old Amsley house. The house hadn't been lived in for over 30 years, but it was still completely furnished. All the kids in the neighborhood thought the ghost of its last owner, Mrs. Amsley, haunted it. This morning, as Stuart passed the house, he felt like he was being watched from an upstairs window. When the boy looked, he saw a figure through the partly open curtains and steam from its breath on the window. It's the ghost of Mrs. Amsley. The eight-year-old began to run and was shocked even more. His socks shined with bright blue light, and he ran incredibly fast. Stuart barely rounded the corner of a dead-end street. He sped down the hill that was a shortcut to school. At the bottom of the hill were some trees. Stuart tried to stop, but he slid up the side of a tree and found himself standing upside down on a branch. Thankful to be still in one piece, Stuart stared at his glowing socks. That's so cool! He exclaimed. Stuart heard someone coming. He quickly made it look like he was hanging by his knees from the branch. Stuart's classmate Sarah walked by, holding a covered cage, and noticed the upside-down boy. Hi, Sarah. What's in the cage? Stuart asked as he climbed down from the tree. It's a gift from my grandmother, Sarah said as she set the cage down and took the cover off. Inside was a bird with beautiful blue feathers. A key hung from the bird's perch. It's mechanical, Sarah explained as she lifted the bird's wing and uncovered geared wheels and springs. The girl wound up the mechanism and the bird chirped a wonderful song. Wow! Whispered Stuart in amazement. At school, the kids showed their pets. There were turtles, cats, and snakes. When Sarah showed her bird to the class, the boy that sat in front of Stuart turned around. 
His name was Charles, and he sneered at Stuart. That's not even real, but it's better than what you have, which is nothing. Charles' dog smelled something strange. The dog crawled under the desks and sniffed Stuart's socks. He bit onto one of the socks and started to pull. As the sock stretched, it began to glow, and blue sparks zapped the dog on its nose. The frightened dog yelped and ran around the classroom, knocking over desks and cages, which set the pets free. The loose animals made a terrible mess. Charles blamed Stuart. Stuart sat in the principal's office. Behind a big desk, the principal talked to the sock puppet on his hand. Well, Mr. Pine. What do you think we should do about young Stuart's behavior? The puppet turned to the boy and frowned. I think the best way to deal with troublemakers is detention. The principal agreed that for the remainder of the day, Stuart would sit in the cafeteria and read. Stuart walked down the empty hallway on the ceiling. After school, Stuart caught up to Sarah walking home. He was about to tell Sarah about his socks when Charles and three of the bully friends stepped out from behind a fence. Charles said they were going into the old Amsley house to see if it was really haunted. He dared Stuart and Sarah to go with them. Sarah replied, "I don't believe in ghosts, and going into that old house has got to be the worst idea you've had today." The girl continued to walk with her birdcage. "Scared of ghosts, Stuart?" Charles laughed. Stuart was nervous until he remembered he was wearing the blue lined socks. Let's go. The boys walked to the side of the old house where a firewood chute led to the basement. The door of the chute was off its hinges and rested halfway on the ground. Stuart was the last one to slide down into the dark room. He looked around, but the other boys were nowhere in sight. The door at the top of the stairs closed. G- guys. Stuart stumbled into some shelves, and a canvas cloth fell over him. Ah! Stuart exclaimed. Up on the main floor, the four boys were planning to frighten Stuart. They laughed as they pulled sheets off the furniture and over their heads to look like ghosts. This will scare Stuart's socks off. Suddenly, the door to the basement flung open. On the ceiling walked a figure with an eerie blue glow that moaned. Ah! The figure passed by a painting of a pleasant-looking old lady with her blue hair worn up in a bun. It's the ghost of Mrs. Amsley! Screamed the boys, running in all directions. Charles grabbed the back door handle and pulled frantically. He looked over and saw the glowing figure walk onto the wall. The door flung open. Wait, guys! He called as the door slammed behind them. The figure was really Stuart struggling to pull the canvas off. Suddenly, the blue light from Stuart's socks dimmed, and he fell off the wall. One of his feet crashed through some of old floorboards, and he couldn't pull it out. Then Stuart heard footsteps upstairs, and the boy knew it must be the creature that had looked out the window that morning. The eight-year-old pulled on his leg, but it wouldn't budge. The socks didn't glow anymore, and the powers were gone. The creature came down the staircase towards Stuart. Stuart's eyes were closed tight when he felt a slobbery lick on his cheek. The boy opened his eyes to see a huge dog. With its big paw, the dog pulled the wood away that trapped Stuart's leg. As Stuart lifted his foot out of the floor, the dog smelled the blue lined socks, which had become dusty, stretched out, and stinky from the long, adventurous day. The dog gave a snort and shook its shaggy head. Slimy drool sprayed everywhere. Gross! Stuart laughed, trying to shield himself. Stuart and the big dog walked home. As they entered the door, Stuart remembered the promise he made to his dad about cleaning up after a dog. The boy laughed and sighed. Dad, where's the shovel? At dawn the next morning, in another part of the city, the professor ran up to an apartment building. 
On the steps of the building were flower planters made from things like a cracked tea kettle and worn out roller skates. The inventor placed a shiny tin can full of dirt on the steps and then he turned and dashed away. <laughs>